ensuring that our service members are treated with gratitude and respect for their service and that they get all the support they need from the Department of Defense. Today, I ordered a series of steps to ensure fair treatment for the California National Guard soldiers who may have re received incentive bonuses and tuition assistance improperly as a result of errors and in some cases criminal behavior by other members of the California Guard. First, I've ordered the suspension of all efforts to collect reimbursement from affected California Guard members. And that suspension will continue until I'm satisfied that our process is working. Second, I've asked our top personnel official in the Department of Defense, Peter Levine, to assess the situation and to establish a streamlined and centralized process no later than January 1st of 2017 uh, and to ensure that it is, it is capable at that time of resolving all cases by July 1st, 2017. Our goal is to have a process that honors the commitment of service members and also our responsibility to the taxpayer. Thank you and let me now move to the defense ministerial here. Very important time for NATO coming out of the Warsaw summit, preparing for the next summit, facing challenges from the east, from the south, from the north, and also from within. And we've had a productive set of meetings today. We'll con they'll continue into this evening. Uh, I have briefed already allies on U.S. continuing efforts to strengthen deterrence here. Uh, first of all, uh, we are uh, contributing a persistent rotational arbor armored brigade combat team, and I'll give you some details of that. Uh, in just a moment, uh, but it's a major sign of the U.S. commitment to strengthening deterrence here. It's not the only one. I'll remind you that we're also um, uh, positioning an armored brigade combat team's worth of equipment here, and that's on top of the two brigades that are already here in Europe. Um, those are part of those, and especially the Rotational Armored Brigade Combat Team specifically, is part of our European Reassurance, Reassurance Initiative. Uh, the $3.4 billion in, of funds in this fiscal year, and I remind you that that's quadruple uh, what we had out allocated last year. This first Rotational Brigade will deploy to Europe in February. It'll be from Colorado and I'll walk you through its agenda. It'll have an initial exercise in Poland, and after that, the brigade will send company-sized units to Bulgaria, Romania, and the Baltic states. Companies will then remain in the Baltics until the NATO battalions arrive. I'll say more about them shortly. In June, the brigade will conduct exercise saber strike in Poland and throughout the Baltic states. And in July, it will move again to Bulgaria and Romania for exercises Swift Response and Sabre Guardian, during which one tank company will transit the Black Sea to Georgia to participate in exercise Noble Partner. And I appreciate all these countries that will host this brigade. Together, we're strengthening deterrence here. Now, in addition, the United States will lead a battalion in Poland as part of NATO's new enhanced forward presence. This is on top of what I've said already. Uh, this was a decision made by the Alliance's leaders in Warsaw. Uh, the United States will lead a battalion in Poland and deploy an entire battle-ready battalion task force of approximately 900 soldiers from the 2nd Cavalry Regiment, which based in Turkey. We'll send a headquarters element, sorry, based in, based in Germany. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We will send a headquarters element, three striker-equipped maneuver companies with a mobile gun system. 
artillery battery, as well as any tank, explosive ordnance disposal, and engineer capabilities. And we're pleased to announce that Romania and the United Kingdom will provide companies that enhance our battalion's combat power and its survivability as it performed its, for, per, performs its forward station deterrence mission there in Poland. Our battalion will arrive in Poland in April of next year and be positioned near the city of Orzysz in northeastern Poland um, to ensure its readiness uh, the United States will immediately upon the onset of the deployment transfer operational control of this U.S. battalion to SAC Europe, Supreme Allied Commander Europe, and place it under the tactical control of a Polish brigade. This is significant. We in, and we're encouraging others to make the same kind of command and control arrangements with NATO. So that one has the structure the location, the sourcing, the partners, and the command and control to NATO for our commitment to enhance forward presence, uh, which our president committed to, as the other heads of state did, uh, at the Warsaw Summit. We also spoke about how the alliance can bolster deterrence and defense uh, in the southeast in particular, and I want to say something about that uh, as well. Uh, we also uh, made a commitment uh, the, uh, as the United States to a battalion from our Rotational Armored Brigade Combat Team to associate and train with the Romanian Multinational Brigade. That as part of the enhanced tailored presence uh, uh, oriented towards uh, the southeastern portion of NATO. Now this afternoon, that was the session already had, this afternoon uh, we'll discuss how we can continue to adapt NATO uh, to ensure it's ready for the challenges not only of today but tomorrow. Um, and uh, the, this, the meeting will continue into this evening. And I'm sure, and we'll talk about there about uh, NATO's southern flank, uh, including counter ISIL. Uh, in addition, this place gives me an opportunity to have a number of uh, uh, useful uh, bilateral and trilateral meetings. I'll just report I had a very good meeting once again with my Turkish colleague whom I visited in Ankara. Um, and uh, that was a very productive, uh, very practical uh, uh, and a discussion uh, of a whole host of alliance issues. Turkey's a very strong ally, of course, of NATO, so we talked about a number of alliance uh, issues, and of course we talked, as we did in Ankara, uh, further about um, uh, the coalition's activities in, um, against ISIL, uh, a coalition of which, uh, of course, Turkey is an important part. Um, we didn't conclude any new arrangements, uh, but we continued these, these very important discussions uh, with a very good partner. And by the way, the defense minister himself is a very good partner of mine. Uh, we also had a trilateral me meeting um, with the French defense minister, Jean-Yves Le Drian, uh, whose purpose was to read out uh, to our Turkish colleague the meeting held yesterday in Paris. That was very productive. Jean-Yves gave an excellent summary of yesterday's proceedings and we could then proceed to discuss it, uh, all three of us. Um, so, uh, uh, we all want to keep ISIL uh, under sustained pressure. Uh, that's the key and uh, defeat it in both Iraq and Syria and everybody uh, shares that objective. So that's pretty much the readout. Let me now take some questions here and I apologize for the length Tara. of that, but there's a lot of detail involved. Yeah. I hope that was we, helpful we to you. We do have to get him back in the meeting, so we <coughs> it's pretty tight. Tara, I cut you off the other day, so you get the first question. Hey, uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary. Just back on the um, reenlistment bonuses <coughs> issue, uh, if I read correctly, there are members of uh, the military that could end up still having to pay depending <coughs> on the outcome of this appeals process. Is that true? 
Well, right. under the law, we have to keep that option open. So that, but the point is that there will be no collections. They're suspended now, and we will put in place, and there won't be any more collections until we've put in place a process that can uh, uh, expeditiously and, and fairly uh, deal with these issues, obviously according to the law. <coughs> um, Mr. Secretary, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about your discussions with some of the members about, about RACA. Um, we've been told that there are some concerns about um, starting RACA right away because of um, there may be a desire to wait until there are some more successes in Mosul so that some of the forces are not strained. Can you just give us a little bit of an idea of what other countries might be talking about in terms of what they intend to bring to this and what your time is? Well, it's, again, this is part of our plan. So we know that the activities in Iraq and Syria are overlapping. Uh, they overlap today. <clears throat> They'll be overlapping as um, uh, because we're conducting them simultaneously. So in our plans, which are not just U.S. plans, as you know, but coalition plans and the resourcing of those plans, we've taken into account that fact. So we've anticipated this. This has been long planned, and we have the resources and can, and um, uh, meetings like the one I had yesterday are times when we make sure we're all coordinated on providing the resources. Uh, aircraft, tankers, and so forth. And I think we gave you some of the detail uh, of that. But it's all, all oriented towards being able to uh, conduct all the operations we need to in Iraq and Syria. And by the way, for the United States, also elsewhere, uh, like Libya and well, Afghanistan. You, um, and we were also told that you don't expect to seek additional U.S. forces. Is that accurate? Our plan now is not to, uh, we don't have any, our, according to our plan, we have the resources we need if you're talking about uh, uh, troop levels. Uh, so that's our plan. However, I will say what I've always said, uh, which is we're going to win this. And so if there's anything that we, can, we need to do to accelerate, uh, I'm prepared to ask for it, but at the mo but in our plans that won't be needed. Bill, just to follow, up, so um, you know, I think in your in your interview this morning uh, you said that it would be a few weeks uh, until the start of the uh, Raqqa offensive. Yeah. Weeks. Could you just, could you just weeks. Um, I can't be more specific than than, than so that. Not, so, so it could be it could be seven weeks, or it, uh, you, you want to be pinned down to a certain you know 21 days or something. You you want to be. We're in a, yeah. Uh, I mean, we we know what we're doing. Uh, this is all, as always a uh, matter when you're positioning forces and so forth. We have a plan to do that and a schedule to do that. Um, but, uh, and, and we're going to execute to that plan. And that plan has us generating those forces in a matter of weeks. That's really all I want to say. Gen generating them. So, so if, you know. It would be generating, generating them and, and positioning them for the isolation of Raqqa. Right. So it would be incorrect for us to go out and report that, you know, because right now there's a, there's a, there's a lot of people picking up on that story saying within a, within three weeks, you know, basically the operation is starting. I think it will be within weeks. That's what I want to say, and and, and uh, not many weeks. <laughs> I don't know where you want to get me to here. Alana? Um, back to, to the uh, National Guard story real Sorry. quick. I understand that there are laws in place, but is there any internal discussion about forgiving? or just kind of letting some of this go? Oh, there, well, there, there's definitely uh, a discussion that which, un, uh, which involves uh, not only the, um, uh, to me, uh, uh, paramount issue of fairness, uh, but there is also the law. And so I think we need to look at that simultaneously. Uh, but we're, 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 we're operating within the law, and I am operating within my authorities to suspend collections starting now, and I'm exercising those authorities. Can that authority be extended further beyond wholesale, or...? I assume so, and I'd certain, but I, that's, I don't expect to have to do that because I, my instructions are uh, to get this resolved. Gordon? Iraq and uh, Turkey countering 
changed at all. Can you give us an assessment of where you felt like it may have gotten? And it, my read of Prime Minister Boddy's remarks was he was he wanted to hear more from Turkey about sovereignty and that kind of thing. Yeah, I, 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 it's pretty much as I've said before, Gordon. We we agree, we all agree on the basic principles, which include uh, Iraqi sovereignty, uh, includes Turkey's role in the coalition, uh, and we're working on the practicalities of that. And that's what our conversation is: very professional discussion. These is. is this is among people who have worked together for many years, uh, not just me and the defense ministers, but uh, Im importantly, our militaries um, as well. So we're working through the practicalities that reflect the principles that, uh, that we share. And oh, I'm sorry, and also the, the need to defeat ISIL, uh, which is a threat to all of us. And, and don't forget, Turkey was attacked uh, also and is threatened by ISIL. And just recently, we killed uh, uh, someone whom we know was planning to uh, terrorist attacks within Turkey, and we eliminated that individual. Thank you. I can, we, we can, I think. Uh, Peter, I hope I'm not going too far on you Secretary here, Peter. Defense, sir, you can say what you want. <laughs> well, we, that, we did. Do you know what our case is anywhere where in Turkey? Or what? No. <laughs> How much you already getting? But I, 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 I say it unabashedly, and we'd do it again. Um, no, 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 no. This is on the battlefield. This is somebody whom we know was planning external attacks to include in Turkey. I'm sorry if I wasn't clear on that. Thank you. Last one is to the left. Mr. Secretary, do you think it would be a, a good thing for the coalition if Turkey uh, participated militarily uh, to the offensive in Raqqa? Uh, well, we're trying to get to a point where uh, uh, we can work with, and we already are at the point where we're working extensively with the Turkish military in Syria. Don't forget, we're right now doing that, uh, that has had a very significant result in the seizure of Dabiq, a very important city in the narrative of ISIL, and that was accomplished by our partnership with the Turks and in the usual way through capable and motivated uh, local forces. So we're looking for other opportunities to, and including uh, further within Syria to include uh, Raqqa, so that's, that's what, that's been part of our discussions. We got to get the secretary back in. He's cut out of this meeting.